this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to paint a bird, and we're going to be using a medium called gouache, which is basically opaque watercolor. So we're going to begin by drawing out our bird. This is a hummingbird, and the hummingbird is approaching a big old sunflower. And we're going to draw the hummingbird by paying attention to the shapes that we see in our photo reference. Um, that's really the big part of setting up a drawing um, that we can create a painting from is just looking at the shapes in our photo reference and trying to mimic those shapes as closely as possible. Once we've got our contour lines on the surface, we can go ahead and begin to start adding paint to the surface. And the way we're going to approach this is by adding blocks of color and slowly building up blocks of color on top of the color that we've already laid down. So it's going to be quite a bit of layering here. So I've just started with some light yellow green and I'm starting to block in areas that I see from the photo reference. We are working on watercolor paper for this demonstration and I'm using a nylon brush to apply the gouache to the surface. Once we've got some areas of green established, we're going to go ahead and add some areas that are light uh, yellow green with some white mixed with that yellow green. And then we're going to start to establish some of the shadowed areas by mixing blue and brown together with a bit of white and just go over the surface where we've already applied some of that white. Then we can mix up a darker gray and start to establish some of the darker areas that we see here. Uh, this would include the eye of the bird as well as some of the, some of the tail feathers. Now we're just going to pay attention to some of the colors that exist in our photo reference and the shapes that they make. And then we're just going to layer those shapes of color right on top of what we've already got down on our surface. A lot of people make the mistake of not doing this. Instead, they'll just put down one application of a color and expect it to do all the heavy lifting for us. And um, really, with any color drawing or painting, it, it requires layering of colors to really create that depth that you're looking for in a drawing or a painting. Now real quickly here, we're going to turn our attention to the bill of the hummingbird, and it's got a bit of shadow right underneath it, so very carefully I'm going to take some watered down black and go right underneath it. At a later stage, I'll come back and make that area a bit darker. All right, we'll turn our attention now to the wing, and again, we're just going to be layering colors on top of what we've already got down. Each time we mix a new color, it should be just a slight bit different than the color that we applied before, and again, that will create that range of uh, value and color that we're after and create that depth. Now I'm going to take um, my brush, a thinner brush in this case, and I'm going to go ahead and start adding some areas of detail with a very dark gray. So I've thinned out black a bit to create this dark gray, and again, I'm just going to pay attention to my photo reference and start to add areas of detail as I see them. Just a quick note about mixing gouache. It is an opaque watercolor paint, and um, it's very easy to make it a little bit too thin. So just be careful when you're mixing and find a consistency that works for you. I'm going to continue using that dark gray in some areas and create some areas of contrast. Here you can see I'm working the tail feathers just a bit to create a bit of contrast down there. Another quick tip on using gouache, since it is a watercolor paint, um, it's a good idea to work an area and then let it dry a bit before revisiting it. That's why in this demonstration, I'm working an area and then leaving it alone for a bit and working in a different area before revisiting it with another layer of paint like I'm doing here with the blue in the bottom portion of the bird. In the same breath, I'm going to go ahead and revisit the wing and start adding some areas of dark gray to create some contrast between the individual segments that exist on the wing. And once we've got those segments established, we can revisit our photo reference and start to find other colors that we see and layer those colors right on top of what we've already established. In this case, we're going to lay down some yellow on top of the yellow green. Then we can uh, grab some white gouache and start to go over areas to make them a bit lighter. This will uh, further increase the contrast between the darker areas and the lighter areas, and it'll also help us smooth out some transitions or gradations of value that exist uh, in the tones on the bird. We'll continue to use our lighter values, in this case on the wings of the bird, to try to create a smoother transition or smoother gradation of value from the gray to the yellow. And we're going to mix that lighter value with just a bit of green and touch up some of the areas on the head of the bird. Create a bit of texture up there in the process. And it's these little subtle details that really make the painting complete. And we'll continue adding some of these details on the body of the bird with, uh, in this case, a bit of gray. It's important to pay attention to these subtle areas of changing contrast because when we add those to our paintings, they'll translate as details in the painting. 
Next, we'll add a bit of sienna to the uh, tail feathers of the bird, just to give it a little bit more warmth and actually make it a little bit more accurate to our photo reference. We'll continue to work in a bit of gray in the upper part of the wing. Um, this will create a little bit less contrast in value because what I had up there was a little bit too strong. And then we'll add a bit of details down again in the tail feathers of the hummingbird just to create a bit more contrast and a bit more texture. Now I want to push the contrast a bit on the bottom portion of the bird, so I'm going to use some super dark gray, almost black, to begin to push some of that contrast. And the tail feathers here, you can see how that contrast is creating a bit of difference between the individual feathers of the tail. And then I want to tone down the contrast that exists on the wings, so I'm going to use a little bit of a lighter gray and go over some of the lines that I had previously put in the feathers. You'll still be able to see the lines through this application of paint, but it'll be more subtle. And again, back at the bottom, I'll revisit with the black again and just create a couple of lines to create a bit more contrast here. So we're working areas of contrast. In some areas, we're pushing the contrast a bit further, and in other areas, we're toning it down. Now the bird is finished, we can move on to the sunflower, and we're going to approach this the same way that we did the bird, by first blocking in areas of color. We're going to start with a dark brown and just establish the shape of the center portion of the sunflower. Then we're going to mix up a golden yellow, and we're going to go ahead and start applying it to the petals of the flower. Once all the basic shapes have been established, we'll revisit the center portion of the sunflower. And with a darker brown, I'm going to start to make marks that mimic the marks that I see, or the lines rather that I see in my photo reference. Then I'll mix up a darker version of the golden yellow that we had before, and I'm going to start to establish some of the shadows that exist on these flower petals. In this case, we'll just paint directly on top of what we've already applied. And if the yellow hasn't completely dried, in this case, it's going to be okay. Then we're going to mix up a lighter version of the golden yellow and we're going to start to create highlights. So just by adding these three values, a shadowed area, a mid-tone, and a highlight, we're going to start to create the illusion of the form of the flower. We'll continue to work some of those lighter values of yellow around different portions of the flower. In the process, we'll be toning down some of the areas of contrast. Now we can use a bit of a darker yellow and a smaller brush and we can start to establish some of the details. If we're satisfied with what we've got on our flower, we can go ahead and start to address the stem of the flower and some of the green parts that exist right underneath the flower itself. So again, we'll begin by blocking in areas with a yellow green. Basically what we're doing here is just establishing the shape then once we've got that established, we can go ahead and move on to a darker version of that green and start establishing some of the shadowed areas. Here I'm just looking at shapes that exist in my photo reference. I'm trying to closely mimic those shapes as I paint them on my surface. Here again, once we've established some of the shadowed areas, we can mix the white with a bit of the yellow green and start to establish some of the highlighted areas. Here again, just these three values are beginning to establish some illusion of form in our painting. As we work, we'll revisit areas and make some areas a bit darker. In this case, I'm going to darken up the right side of the sunflower since our light source is actually coming from the bottom 
left hand side of the picture plane. So uh, the majority of the areas that are on the right side of the sunflower are going to be darker in value. So we'll establish that with a darker green. We'll continue this process of adding darker values and lighter values until we're happy with the illusion that's created on the surface of our paper. Then after a few minutes and we've allowed the paint to dry, we can take a kneaded eraser and erase the pencil lines that we drew in the first step. And that's it. Uh, that's a step-by-step -step process of how to paint a bird using gouache.